Drummond and County Kerry. It's quite a small area. Um, and people say to me, who would you want to come to this exhibition? Mm. And I would say, everybody. So people turn up to everything because it's a very strong sense of community. And so we have all kinds of people at it. We're hoping it'll be like a very good funeral, where everybody turns up out of respect. Nobody might buy anything, but then you never and uh, We just leave it up to people. I think as visual artists, we just want people to be happy and you know, turn up and have a laugh, have a few drinks, and um, hopefully somebody will buy something. So um, I came to live here about a year ago. Uh, I used to live here and teach here for about 35 years. And then I moved away with my husband to Bulgaria and he died, I came back here. Then I discovered that I could swim in the river and I swim most days. And then I started to get to know the history of the river, which was a lot of netting of salmon. So river jobs. You net nice. at night, well, allegedly, when this went on. Nobody ever really netted, but it happened at night. So this is one of the things, this is a triptych. So this is the river going over the Owen Hina, or this is the bridge going across the Inni River. And we have a man here, all masked up. This is pre-COVID. Okay, and he's got a nice net in his hand, and he's got somebody to swim across to the other side with that. Now you'll see that the tide is coming in, because the salmon are coming across, having swum the Atlantic. They're wrecked, and the minute they get into the water, the fresh water and stuff like that, they like to relax in the pools. So this is Pauna Sop, Sineon Tanma Oscoyne, eh? So, Tom Farshaw Maskehusuas, Augustom Rinna Haul, Augustal Shason Iha, Augustal Ban Erste and Shin, known as the bag woman. There was always an old lady who would carry a bag full of salmon so you wouldn't see it. And she'd pretend she was a bit simple like, you know. <laughs> and so these would be the boys, and here's the lookout. The lookout is at that side of the bridge because Waterville Road is that way, and that's where the dreaded bailiffs lived. So that's that. It's very difficult. Now, somebody told me that I've been washed away in the storms. It's still there. It's still there, but they um, had to move it with a digger up to the left of where that is, and it's up on the dunes so it wouldn't get swept away again. But I've never found it again since. So <laughs> they might have buried it a bit too deep. But um, that's one of the first shipwrecks that I ever saw when I came over here, and it's a special thing. I've, I've done loads of um, work. Uh, uh, paintings of um, different aspects of it. Um, there's a pencil drawing of it over there. It just lends itself to getting closer and, and seeing it. When I came over here to Kerry thir 30 years ago now, and I think within the first month I knew I'd made the right choice. And, um, things like the uh, Skellings have always had a big pull for me. Luckily I was able to go over there a couple of dozen times and I think I only paid twice. People were paying for me to go over, which is great. And um, I can't go over now because I can't, I can't manage the steps, but uh, it still inspires me. That's what a lot of my work is. If it's not the skelligs and shipwrecks, it's birds. birds Again, the, 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 the skelligs. There's a little arch on the, the left side of that, uh, the little uh, skelly, and if you're lucky enough, it's calm enough to, to actually take you through that little archway on the boats that go out to Skelly and, Ma and Michael. And um, it's scary actually, there was a, a boat actually sank there and left about 15 people there. Mm -hmm. the boat. <clears throat> then we decided to do stuff, and I asked for donations of old beds or doors or cupboard doors or something. And the name of this is Laba in Marna Er Laba, which is a bed in a gap on a bed. This was given to me by my friend and neighbor, Noreen. It was Noreen's sister's bed, and she got a new bed and donated this. And this is how you used to do it in the old days. You just put a big, big lump of iron bed in there and to keep the animals together. Then somebody said, the lads would get through that barbed wire, so it has barbed wire up there that would keep in an elephant. Um, 
we have a lot of barn owls around here. Um, I'm sure they gave rise to the, um, the stories of the supernatural because if, if you're in a dark churchyard and you hear them scream, mm. and you see this ghostly shape just floating um, with that That's just another thing that fascinates me is all the lichen and growth on rocks around here because the air is so pure and that little patch of uh, sea pink in the middle just looks so lost there <laughs> and just struggling for life so but that's worth a uh, painting. Colleen Vaughan. It's a lovely little. It's not. Um, it's not a shark to the left hand side. It's just a rock <laughs> in the shape of a shark. I'll tell you about this. This door came in. I asked for a donation, and this door came from I can't remember his name. This lovely man's house. But on the door, which was painted just yellow and pretty bashed up, was the Sacred Heart. And if you raised a Catholic in Ireland you will recognise that this comes from the time of Pope Pius, so this is the 50s. Okay. And this was in leather, which meant it cost a lot of money, and it was nailed onto the door. And it's probably an old door that was put hardboard over to modernise or whatever. And I couldn't take it off, because you couldn't. And my mother would kill me, Mammy's dead, and God would come home. So I couldn't do that. And it's our tradition. So somebody said, Emer suggested, why don't I put in a hat? And of course, the inevitable fish, the salmon. And one of my neighbours came in and he was looking at that and he said, My God, those salmon are only three hours old. <laughs> I didn't ask how he would know, I just said, Fair enough. So it's kind of set in the 50s, before electrification, you have tilly lamps and all that kind of stuff. So it's all related to um, the, the river and what it produces for people and how it fed people and brought up families and all that. Early one morning, I was taking my daughter back to Beaufort. Um, my daughter is disabled. And it was really early in the morning, and it was just quiet and nice like that. And I kind of stayed in my head, did a fast drawing, and did it. And I'm very happy with that. That was so a lot of proofs that people liked it. So that's cool. That's beautiful, very peaceful. This is called Turf War. And this is when the first planes were going into Iraq. They flew from America, they flew in convoy. That was 10 past 7, some March morning, 2003 or something like that. It's about now there's a big thing about turf because we can't cut it anymore because it's not. It's, um, it's, it holds carbon. Uh -huh. And so it's kind of got a bit of a double meaning like that. So that was called like, you know, it's like turf war, the way they'd have them in America, like, you know, this is my area and this isn't. But this was just turf and war. Is funny. It's about climate change, and also that's about 10, 12 years old when it was painted. I haven't signed that yet. God, I don't think about it. So it's all about the sheep with the sunglasses. Sheep don't wear sunglasses. But there was a sheep farmer who came in and killed me and said, What are you doing putting sheep? Your sheep isn't going to wear sunglasses. And I was trying to explain him and everything. So we had a great laugh in the end, and he completely understood. So that's what that's about, I just stuck the skeletons in the back. Sheep like own the roads, and there are sheep who know how to behave on a road, and sheep who don't. And the sheep who know how to behave on a road are great. They just look at you and kind of go, okay, and then they move sideways, you know. And the sheep that don't will just look at you, so... Um, watercolour was the uh, window in a shed when I first bought the house that I'm in now. And uh, it's no longer there, it's a door now so I thought I'd better take a photograph of it and I, I thought well that looks pretty decent so I'll do a painting. I've seen some of these in the the book on the Ivera oh, yeah. Peninsula. Yeah. Tell us a bit about that, how they ended up in the National Gallery or whatever. <laughs> There's um, a guy called John Sheehan and he's done two books now on Ivera and um, his second one was a bit more uh, commercial. The first one was a scholarly tome 
and it, uh, the second one has more 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 colour in it and, and things. So he asked me to uh, do some pictures of birds. So I got a double page spread in the in his latest book, which is quite good. Adam on the other shoulder, a geoscarot or gluon gluon, which is fishing from one generation to another. And this guy isn't finished. So again, it's on the Hina on Shin, and the net has been taken across here, behind this man's head, and you have the grandfather passing on his knowledge to the young five, six-year-old child at night. And this is sort of, he's a rugged man. Lots of people think they know who he is, but he's not anybody in particular. And there's a sort of, I feel a sadness from him. You know, maybe he's passing on his stuff, and, and uh, I don't know, it's a bit... And this door was donated by, it was a cupboard door, belonging to Dara O'Driscoll and his wife Amelia. Sometimes when you get a work, it dictates like that one, you know, and this one also dictated, but I wanted to do it like this. And I swim up this river. It's wonderful. I haven't been able to. I do not net. Now the netting was alleged, okay? The alleged netting. Because nobody ever did it but everybody understood. And now, when it used to be like totally illegal, now it's our heritage. Our nylons on this ship. This one is some standing stones in uh, Waterville. And again, when I first saw those, I was lucky enough that the light was so fantastic. The, they're not actually that colour, they're, they're mid-grey. But when the light strikes them, you can get every, anything from white to uh, yellow, bright, bright uh, yellow. So it's something that I tend to return to time and again. And that's over on the uh, Skellix. I was absolutely amazed with the puffins and about the third or fourth time I went out we were um, we went out free because the um, uh, Arts Council paid for uh, six artists and six uh, uh, poets to go over and do some work there so I went over and having a sandwich halfway through the day and a puffin jumped over my legs and I thought, well, you can't get much better than this. That's so. something I've been doing just lately. I've been doing all the um, uh, ancient stones that are around. Um, uh, there's so many in Ireland. The good thing is the, the Irish have never got rid of them. In, in the UK, a lot were lost because farmers were setting fires under them and breaking them for building material. Yeah. But the Irish always thought, well... The fairies might come and get me, so I'll, uh, I'll just leave it alone. Um, this is back in Inchbota, and the turf is being brought home on a very old tractor. And it's coming back from the bog, and it's going to be brought to this house, I think. This is our local tavern, and if you had time, I would take you over there for a pint. This is also the centre of our world in Drummond. It's a pub and a, a shop and uh, Humphrey and Noreen live there now and every Saturday and Sunday it's, it's the centre of the world everybody goes there and dances and sings set dancing and any kind of dancing and I actually did this song in a tavern his girls found and that old triangle went jingle jangle all along the banks of the In Ireland you have the government and you have a branch of the government which looks after 
the Irish language and the Irish culture and all that kind of business. It needs to be protected. Ireland is changing because we have so many visitors. We were just an island, an isolated then island. We started having more money and travelling and everything and people are coming to live here. So it's changing and hopefully it's changing for the better. And But we will still protect the Gwaeltacht because it has to be. It's our heritage and it's where we're at. Shani ar nairat un Gwaeltacht. They really help us and finance part of this place and it's it's just wonderful. I love it. <laughs>